Hello, welcome to the Digital Signal Processing video lectures. My name is Jeffrey Herman, and I will be your online instructor for this course. To begin this lecture series, I will do a quick review of what you would have learned in your analog signal processing course, and then introduce you to the terminology and systems of digital signal processing. In analog signal processing, you learn that a system consists of an input, filter, and output. We use the subscript A to denote that the signals X and Y are analog signals. In this example, we show how a low pass filter removes the high frequency components, or the squiggles, from X sub A of T to produce a low frequency signal Y sub A of T. We are able to directly examine the frequency content of signals such as X sub A of T by using the Fourier transform shown above. The frequency domain signal is represented by X sub A of omega, where omega is measured in radians per seconds. Similarly, we are able to transform X sub A of omega back to the time domain by using the inverse Fourier transform. Here, we see an example Fourier transform signal. I want to point out one important feature of this signal. The magnitude of the Fourier transform goes to zero beyond certain frequencies. This signal is said to be band limited. In digital signal processing, we are concerned only with such band limited signals. We denote the band limit with the capital letter B. When we have a band-limited signal, we can approximate the analog signal x sub a of t with the digital signal x sub n. The n tells us that x is a function of samples n rather than a function of time t. We create this digital signal by sampling the signal at periodic intervals of time. When there is high frequency content in the signal, these intervals of time must be small. If these intervals are too large, we lose vital information about the signal. Notice how the sampled signal on the right does not fully show the high frequency content of X sub A of T. When there is only low frequency content, like Y sub A of T, these intervals can be larger. With the same time intervals as the previous example, we can accurately recreate y sub a of t with both periodic intervals. This sampling process is represented schematically by a switch that opens and closes periodically with period t. Every time the switch closes, the value of x sub a of t is measured and quantized into a binary number that is stored in registers or computer memory. For example, this sample here is stored as a 0 in memory, and the next sample is stored as a 3. The values stored as memory become our discrete time signal x of n. When we have a signal that is band limited to b radians per seconds, or f hertz, we can perfectly recreate the original analog signal if the sampling frequency is high enough. Specifically, we can recreate the analog signal if the sampling frequency f sub s is greater than 2f. The critical sampling frequency where f sub s equals 2f is called the Nyquist frequency. Notice that f sub s is inversely related to t. So small intervals of time for t will equate to higher sampling frequencies. Typically, we want to sample at a higher frequency than the Nyquist frequency. If we have sampled at or above the Nyquist frequency, we can perfectly recreate the analog signal x sub a of t by multiplying every sample by a sinc function 
centered on that sample and adding the resulting sync functions together. The sync function is defined as the sine of t divided by t where the sync function equals 1 when t is 0.